everyone, Jacob here from Painted for Combat, and in today's quick tip, we're learning to paint manual supports. For today's example, I'm going to be using Orca Slicer, but this is going to be very much the same process in any of the Bamboo Studio derived slicers. Let's say that you've turned on auto supports and gone to preview your model. And let's say that those auto supports are making a mess of things. They're going to be difficult to remove, they're getting into annoying places and supporting places that frankly don't need to be supported, just adding in extra scarring. So you've decided you want to do this manually. What's the best approach? Very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this back to manual supports. If we now come back over into the prepare tab and click our model, we can see we have a bunch of tool options up the top, one of which is support painting. We can now enter this view here where we can see our model in grey, and we have a selection of tools we can use. With these selected you can start painting in supports. Using left click here I can paint on areas where I want supports to be generated, and using right click I can highlight areas that maybe I don't want supports to be generated on. And if you want to remove painting that you've done for support enforcers or support blockers, holding shift and left click will erase that section. The very first tool is circle, which is exactly what it looks like, a circle that follows our cursor and paints supports. Now, it's worth understanding that this circle is projected from the view, so if we're looking at this at this angle and painting in supports, if we look under, anywhere that's under those parts that we couldn't see, neither could the slicer. So it's going to leave all of those details behind the areas we've painted without support material. If you wanted those areas to be hit, you could instead use Sphere, which is a 3D brush. Now if we do the same thing here, we can see that anything that was within that sphere has been captured. Another option is the fill bucket. This will essentially let you select an angle and paint any supports on areas within that angle. I'm just going to decrease this down to about 7, and as we can see here it's now highlighting chunks of our model. And by selecting these we can essentially tell it that we want supports on any of these big flat faces. Maybe you're not necessarily supporting miniatures, but instead you're working with hard surface models that are larger, more practical prints, this is a great tool to use. If you've painted supports on a model before, maybe you're familiar with resin printing, chances are you're looking at this model and starting to identify areas that might need support material. Anywhere that has large overhanging pieces in midair, or anywhere that has big steep angles. But if you're not so familiar, it might be useful to use the highlight overhangs feature. Adjusting the slider will begin to highlight in red any areas at a certain angle threshold. So at the moment this is turned to 38 degrees, so we can see anything here that is steeper than 38 degrees. And this has highlighted a lot of our overhanging pieces as well. If we select one of our tools, for example I'm going to use the sphere today, we can adjust the pen size here to make this large if you're working with bigger hard surface models, or we can shrink that right down for working with something like miniatures. So with all that in mind I'm going to go through and support this model. And it's good practice to get into to actually slice your model as you're doing this. Take a look, see if you can spot any overhangs where you need to add additional supports, maybe you need to block some areas, and then go back into the support painting and continue. For example here I have completely forgotten to highlight his claw on this side, and just like that our model is fully supported. We can scrub through here, take a look at all the layers and make sure that all the parts that need supports have them, and that none of the areas are too enclosed that it's going to be difficult to remove these once the print is done. So that's how you would paint supports from scratch if you had a delicate model like this that you wanted to have full control over. But let's say that the auto supports are doing a good enough job and you just want to tweak them a little bit. I'm going to go back to our model here and erase all the support painting we just did, flick these back to tree auto, and take another look. So here we can see much messier supports than our fully custom ones that we did earlier. But maybe you don't want to go through all of that work that we've done and just want to be able to edit these automatic supports. With the auto support generation we can see here a bunch of unnecessary supports, some of which are encasing areas which will make them hard to remove later, and some of them are just supporting areas that frankly don't need support material. Things like these little overhangs here, and up behind his cap. So how can we remove some of this superfluous support material without having to do it all manually? We can come into some of these areas and start just painting them out using that right click that we saw before. Now anywhere that we highlight in this red will no longer ask the slicer to generate supports for those areas. Now with something a bit more complex like his head here, maybe you don't want to go around this entire area blocking out areas that supports cannot generate. Well there is another tool that is going to make that far more simple. So what I'll do here is I'll back out of the support painting feature, I usually just do this by selecting the move tool, and now I can come over to our process panel. By selecting objects this gives us access to the actual model that's loaded in the slicer and by right clicking I can now add a support blocker. This will let me select a shape from any of these basic shapes, or you can load in a custom file. For this I'm just going to be using a sphere. What this has done is added in a transparent red sphere that we can position anywhere on this model. 
I'm just going to position this so that every part of the sphere is encompassing all of the pieces that we don't think we need supports on. And there we have it, a much cleaner automatic support generation. As we can see here, these little details that we highlighted in red that don't need support material have no longer got it, and everywhere that that sphere was overlapping on the head of our model no longer has supports either. So those are the two ways that you can go about support painting, whether you are fully manually supporting a model, or if you are just removing some of those automatic supports. Let me know if you do like this idea for a new quick tips series, leave a comment down below with any quick tips you might want to see in the future, or any ideas that you have for future quick tip videos, whether they're unexplored features and slices that would be useful for more people to know, or just generally good knowledge for people to further their hobby. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.